Part four is about how to do it, what works in entrepreneurial education, why, and some tools. So how do we make people more entrepreneurial? Basically, there are very few shortcuts. It doesn't work just telling them, be creative, be brave, or just do it, or read a book or listen to these video lectures. It will not make you more entrepreneurial. Many say that the only way is learning by do it. But then we have to answer the question, learning by doing what? What is it that they are, should be doing in order to learn what we want them to, to learn? Should they start a real company? Should they solve a problem? Should they write a business plan? Well, that is uh, some uh, ways of doing things that have been uh, used a lot. But I think uh, today there are better ways and easier ways. There is a whole new toolbox that has emerged the last decade. And the focus is on value creation rather than organization creation. So it's more on the wide definition uh, than, the, than the narrow definition of entrepreneurship. Uh, at Chalmers, uh, we have been working with a Swedish foundation called uh, Drivhuset, and we have built a platform together with them. It's based on, on tools such as business model creation, uh, Canvas, uh, NABC, SPIN, Effectuation, and so on. I will show you these tools later in this video. But why is this working? Uh, because that is what we see when we are using these tools. Well, my explanation that I've come up with through my research is it is the emotional events that do the trick. We arrange activities such as value creation that trigger emotional events such as interaction with outside world and uncertainty and teamwork and pitching, which in turn develops entrepreneurial competence, self-efficacy, passion, identity, etc. So uh, here it is in a slightly bigger way. There are links between these three steps. And my research has been about empirically trying to observe the links between emotional events and entrepreneurial competencies. And there are a lot of links. The three, three strongest links are teamwork environment, which is impacting self-insight, uncertainty and ambiguity in learning environment, impacting increased uncertainty and ambiguity tolerance, and interaction with outside world leading to increased self-efficacy. But why emotions? What has emotions got to do with learning? Well, quite a lot, I would say. If we look at uh, the definition of learning by Peter Jarvis, uh, learning is when the whole person, body and mind, experiences a social situation uh, where you, you work cognitively, emotively, or practically, or through a combination. And this leads to a changed or more experienced person. That is learning. So emotion is one of three main components that uh, leads to learning. And actually, there are quite a lot of researchers uh, pointing out the, the, the key importance of emotions in learning. Emotions provide the foundation for all other modes of learning, according to John Dirks. And emotions have diagnostic value for teachers because they reveal learners' underlying cognitions, commitments, and concerns. And Hargreaves even says that without attention to the emotions, educational reforms uh, might actually damage some of uh, the most fundamental aspects of, of what teachers do. And also in the domain of neuroscience, we find uh, a lot of support for these uh, emotions, the importance of emotions for learning. So how, what, what is it that happens when we learn in, in, in this way? Well, first of all, we use a shared set of rules, processes, tools, knowledge, ideas, and sign, science when we start working together with other people, learning by doing. It's about interaction with other people, activity that is shared. This could be your classmate. This is the learner. And then when they work together as a group, they come up with something. It becomes an outcome of some sort. And that means that uh, they come up with new rules, processes, tools, knowledge, science, ideas, and so on. And what also happens is uh, internalization, which is deep learning, where this becomes the, the shared uh, knowledge and so on becomes mental knowledge, mental ideas, mental processes. So here we have the surface learning, which informs action. Then we take action and we create something valuable. 
uh, and then that leads to deep learning, internalization of this. Uh, up here we have an arrow showing that only the valuable artifacts are actually adopted by a wider community. So uh, most of the things here end up in attics and, and basements of, of our homes and we never use them. Some things though become valuable to others. And uh, yeah, here is some glossary. The, this framework is based on, on, on uh, Russian theory, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, commonly used in, in, in education today. Vygotsky is a very famous researcher. Uh, so this is what I call creation, according to my classification model from, from, uh, from the, one of the previous uh, parts in this video. When we come up here, we talk about value creation rather than creation, because it becomes valuable to someone else. When we go this way, it becomes venture creation, when the value creation is sustained. So um, th this model shows what needs to be in place in order to, to, to achieve learning by doing. And if we go back to the words by the, by the OECD, uh, which I said in the, in the first part of this, uh, this video uh, uh, series, the nice words. How do we get these nice words? Well, here they come. When we work, uh, together, we get both surface learning and deep learning. Uh, the teamwork is an integral part of working this way. Uh, taking initiative, you cannot escape taking initiative when you're working with people because action is, is underlying all activity. Um, risk tolerance is, 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 is inherent in all human action and its uncertainty. So as soon as you start interacting with people, you get risk in, into it and you get a tolerance for it if, if you sustain it. Creativity is actually defined as novel ideas that are valuable. So if we have something novel here that becomes valuable, we also fulfill what is often called creativity. And I would also say that responsibility is fulfilled if we do something that is valuable to others. We take responsibility in what we do if we try to do something that becomes valuable. So all these fine, nice words, they, uh, they actually become real when we work this way. And, and, and that is, uh, this is uh, the same picture from, from last, last uh, uh, part of this video series. So here you can really see how creating value for others becomes a very motivating way of working and asking uh, for whom is this knowledge valuable in 15 minutes. So learning by doing what? My answer would be learning by creating value. Let's have a quick look at some of the new value creation tools that have come up in the last decade or so. Uh, we have effectuation, customer development, lean startup, business model canvas, appreciative inquiry. All of these tools, they actually need to be washed from business words in order to be used in, in education. And I will show this in, in, in the next uh, uh, part of this video series, how that can be done. Effectuation is about uh, trying to mirror how successful entrepreneurs work. Many people thought that they focused on a goal and tried to find the means to, to get to that goal. What actually happens, according to Sarasvati, who came up with this uh, idea, was that they start with what they have and then they imagine different possible goals. So instead of cooking according to recipe, uh, they cook in, uh, by opening their fridge and seeing what is in there. So. For what cause am I doing this was the way people thought they were doing, but what they are actually doing is what could be the effect of my resources. Effectuation. That is why it's called effectuation. And there are some, uh, some different uh, basic principles that you can look at. Uh, there's a lot of videos about this on, 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 on the internet. Uh, and, and here are the principles. Uh, and, and she came up with the effectuation cycle starting with a couple of very simple questions. Who am I? What do I know? Who do I, who do I know? And so on. And then go on, interact with people and get commitment and expand the cycle of resources and so on. Um, customer development is, 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 is a, a way of stop selling and starting listening and testing hypotheses. What are your customers' problem and are you actually solving them? And letting company building be the last step. So instead of organization creation, we are focusing on value creation. And the business model canvas is a, is a checklist for uh, different aspects that you need to uh, have in mind when you create value to others. 
So it's a nine bullet checklist, basically, which can be used for Skype, for example, for Facebook, and for uh, a summit of some kind. Uh, Appreciative Inquiry is the last tool here, and it's basically a, a strength-based view. Uh, and, and instead of working with the problems we have, we work with our strengths. What works well? When is when does this system work at its best? And try to develop things from there. And this is very good for learning from previous experiences, involving an entire organization, motivating people, and building a future vision shared by many people. So that can also be used. Okay, uh, in the next part, I, we will look uh, at value creation as pedagogy. Thank you.